Welcome to Red, White and Blue. I'm Gary Pollan. And I'm Jay Iyer. This week on Red, White and Blue, NAFTA trade and tariffs. It sounds kind of like a boring subject, <laughs> but uh, Jay and I did a little research and north of $200 billion is exported by Texas every year, north of $200 billion in imports every year. So it's a significant factor in our prosperity. And this week, we have three very interesting guests to help explore that with us and educate our viewers. First, Dr. Laura Marilla, who's president and CEO of the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And next, Dr. Richard Sindelar. I got a little bit out of order, but Richard's an assistant professor at the University of St. Thomas in the Center for International Studies. Been around before, and of course, Massey Villarreal, who I've known forever, uh, president of Precision Task Group, Inc., on the Greater Houston Partnership Board, a former chairman of the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the Texas Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and the National uh, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, but he was never your boss. That's, well, he's certainly in, in many ways my boss. <laughs> Still. Nobody can be a large boss. <laughs> All right, so let, let's start with, it's okay, let's start with a professor, okay? He was involved in international relations, so he knows how that works. And he came with a, a real cool pin for the University of St. Like Thomas. The sheriff's badge. That's right. Doesn't have. <laughs> I know. So uh, why why should we, should we be concerned about what's going on with NAFTA trade and tariffs? Why is that important to everyday life and for Texans? Uh, everyday life for Texans, jobs, 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 jobs. Two hundred million. Uh, I don't have the statistic in my mind, but I think it's about ever fifty thousand jobs, fifty thousand dollars in uh, revenue from exports and imports uh, creates a job. So. Uh, in the first 10 years of NAFTA, for instance, uh, over 270,000 jobs net. You take the losses, because they're gonna be losses, and you take the gain, 270,000 jobs were gained nationally by NAFTA in the first 10 years, according to a Carnegie study. And, and Massey, of course, you've, you've been a leader in the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce around the nation for a long time. Uh, has, has NAFTA been a success or failure? I think it's been a success. I think we've had like a 377% increase in trade with Mexico. Uh, you know, Mexico, our first, our next best, our best trading partner, followed by Canada. So absolutely, it's, uh, it's great to have good two trade partners in the Americas with you. Do you think that the improvements that President Trump has negotiated or his people have negotiated with Mexico are gonna be a net benefit for Texas? Well, you have to remember that NAFTA was first negotiated before the internet. So we talk about digital changes, you talk about new technologies, we have to upgrade it, so I think that if just, even if we just refresh NAFTA, it'd be a, a, certainly a positive on NAFTA. Uh, Dr. Murillo, were you surprised that, uh, that the, a deal was cut so quickly between the Trump administration and, and Mexico in reforming NAFTA? Well, we're not surprised with anything that the administration does these <laughs> days. I think it's very hard to keep up with it. What we need to focus on is exactly what the professor said. This is about jobs, economic impact. We know that a trade between the U.S. and Mexico is over 180 billion as it relates to Texas. We need to look at that. Are there opportunities to make some tweaks to it? Absolutely, but still, we understand the value and importance of the relationship with our neighbors, Canada and Mexico. We must be on top of this. We must make sure that whatever happens, that we take care of Texas, we take care of Houston, the Port of Houston, the Medical Center, and all of the different sectors that are benefactors of NAFTA. Let's talk a little bit about and unpack some of the changes that's happened. Rick, in, in some of the the modifications that have taken place, what what have you seen? What do you like? What do you not like? Um, are they are they actually going to make an impact? Well, uh, the first thing I think that, that we might want to get on the table is NAFTA originally, when put together both with Canada and then later with Mexico, included a government-to-government-to-government -to -government -to -government process for redefining and rejiggering it and reworking it. And over time, that kind of fell away with administrations, but it was always meant to be a deal to be fixed because you know as things evolve economically and trade-wise, things are gonna need fixing. Uh, we got some pretty good intellectual property wins in this, protecting our intellectual property. Um, Mexico actually, uh, in terms of the new president in, uh, Manuel uh, uh, Lopez Obrador, he uh, is, a part of it is an increase in wages, which he is in favor of, up to $16 a, an hour, which is well above what they used to pay in the auto industry. So uh, I'm in favor of most of the fixes there. The content issue in the global world creates more of an issue, because it, it's gonna make it harder and more expensive to get the parts for some of the equipment. But generally, job-wise, good, good, good fixes, I think. But Massey, do you have, what's your take in terms of the kind of the state of the relationship between U.S. and Mexico now? 
I know we've we've seen there's been a lot of sort of heated rhetoric going back and forth. That's kind of alluding to what Gary said. There was a little bit of surprise with how quickly they were able to do it. How does the geopolitics side of it play into it? Well, you have to remember that we had like a very, uh, I guess, hard, rough campaign season. I mean, the things that were said about the wall, uh, about murders and rapists, but at the end of the day, you know, 378,000 jobs in Texas were affected, so we're important. Uh, we were, at first, we were concerned that the, the president would cancel uh, the NAFTA, uh, even though the president really can't cancel the NAFTA because this is a Congress ratified. Uh, so uh, if you listen to the noise at, on both sides, from now Canada uh, and then you know our administration in Mexico, there's a lot of you know positioning. Like so, if we if we're trying to rush the president to NAFTA, then the trade representative from Canada says, "Look, Americans, Texans, or Hispanics want this trade war to, to end." So it forces, they, they think they forces our hand in the negotiations. So I think one of the things that we have done is kind of play quiet and sideline, not to feel like we're anxious because then that kind of playing our hand into the anxiety of a negotiation. So again, if you take the noise out of the geopolitics and talk about the real trade, there are some real uh, substantive uh, negotiations and opportunities for increased business. And uh, it was agreed by, you know, it was a group, it was bilateral. They yes. both agreed they do it. They invited Canada to be in on the deal right. and Canada doesn't want to be in the deal. They said, we're going forward without you. Sure. Well, it's important to, to all of us. And as Massey mentioned, and as someone who's been very true to the Republican Party, I think Massey would agree that the noise has distracted us from the economic impact of NAFTA and all of these other issues. And it's incumbent upon the leadership to keep us focused on the facts and focused on jobs and our economy and stay away from that noise and help people understand what is true about NAFTA and what is not. So when you hear rhetoric such as America first and let's stop you know, helping Mexico and they're taking advantage of this and immigrants are here and a hindrance, that's not fair, that is not true. And we need to focus on the fact that this country was certainly the benefactor of immigrants and we continue to play a role in this country. Hispanics are not all immigrants. Many of them were born and raised here and are as American as anyone else. Dr. Murray, you, you mentioned immigration, so I want to kind of pivot to that because I do think it's an interesting topic here. Um, let's talk a little bit about, do you see a role for immigration uh, in, 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 as part of NAFTA in some, some form or fashion? Uh, I've, I've written a little bit about it. Rick knows something about this as well. What's your thought um, about how we can solve, I think, some of the immigration issues yes. through free trade? Well, we understand that the people coming from other countries to the U.S., that number has gone down. Anything that we can do to make sure that people in their country of origin have the opportunity to work. They don't come here because they want to. They come here because they have to out of necessity or their lives are in danger. If we can find ways to make sure that we're communicating with those countries to give those individuals opportunities to live a successful life and have well-paid jobs, then that benefits the United States as well. So we are all the beneficiaries of working, collaborating, and the proximity between our countries. It's incumbent upon us to serve as those leaders. Rick, you, you want to well, comment? Well, <clears throat> the, the thing about immigration, I think, is uh, we have to look at the present two-party agreement as a starting point. Uh, now, do we want to add things to that, or do we want to see that go forward and get locked in, and then go with what I would call addendums or other fixes that are necessary? We really need an immigration fix, both for the undocumented, but we also need an immigration fix for our labor market. It's it's right. out of Workers. sync, it's out of sync. So why is it that we, uh, we, we've gone, besides the fact of the irresponsibility of both parties in Washington, to not do anything about it and just, exactly make noise, as you, you guys correctly pointed out, and girls. So what do we do? What do we do What do we do we to get an immigration fix? Should we have a worker? Should we allow people to apply to become to work temporarily in the well, country? The, the, legally, that they're legally here temporarily to work, so they, they come out of the shadows, because they're here anyway, so I doesn't that make sense? A guest worker program, why don't well, we know who, yeah, who's that's, here? That's a good point. Do we, Rick, do you see, or, or Massey, do you see kind of the idea of maybe uh, expanding the TN visa? Uh, well, yeah, to, to maybe within, uh, well, within what, TN what, and then make what it into NAFTA a guest does work. not have. NAFTA was <clears throat> let the brains switch around. So we've got all the high end engineers. <laughs> right. Okay, well, how about what we need to do bees? is have, whether it's within NAFTA or what I call an addendum, something that lets the average worker move around. How do we get spaces. around the politics of that, Massey, and actually well, get it done? Well, Bipartisanship. Yeah. Wow. Because there are tell there me where are, to find there that. There are enough. <laughs> there are enough votes in Washington on the Republican side who wants. You know, more labor and the Democratic side who believes in helping the DACA and others. 
I, I read studies that say that there's enough votes in the middle, but neither party is reaching across the aisle. Well, Senator Cornyn had a guest worker program. He proposal. did. We talked. We had a guest worker program, but I would say, you know, the only thing that I disagree with the administration on is a reduction in legal immigration. The United States right. illegally immigrates a million people a year. The second country is Germany by 250,000. If you reduce the cap on legal immigration, then it really forces illegal immigration because we need those resources here, right? So industry, uh, business will go out and, still and hire these people. And so I think I disagree with the administration that we should cut legal immigration because that's how we really get really great workers here. And, and our corporate partners and those that run everything from hospitality, restaurants, construction, their main concern is the lack of Workforce. Right. They don't have enough people. I mean, they're getting these projects. Legal workforce. Well, <laughs> we know they're hiring people. Illegal. Well, <laughs> but even there, yeah. even there, there are fewer people. <laughs> with all of the rhetoric that is going around, they're, they're the sanctuary cities and all of these other things that are putting on the table that are causing fear among employees and workers. They're they're fleeing and going to other areas where they feel less well, threatened. And, and we can we can you know we've debated this before, but I mean you you can give credit to who whoever you think it should go to. But we've got a great economy from an employment perspective, almost full employment now. The idea of sort of cutting off immigration makes no sense. So why not expand it? We're bipartisan at this table. Maybe we can come up with something. Well, I'm sure we can come up with some ideas on, on, on legal immigration that should make sense. But again, the, the gridlock in Washington has been very difficult in the rhetoric. I mean, and, and, they're, and they're, we're not debating sanctuary cities uh, this week. Oh, well, we That's need to continue show. to put pressure uh, on those who are leading. But there should be... Yeah. The people in the country, we should have, if you're working here, there should be guest workers. And again, if you we focus on- We need to figure on... out that so we bring people out of the shadows, which yes. is a bad thing. Correct. I, everyone agrees. Correct. We also need to make sure that expanding legal immigration right. means we bring in the kind of people that we want, which are law-abiding well, folks who want to come here and work and not be on welfare, well, all of which makes sense. But we have to recognize- We already had something like that. We right, called once. the Bracero program. The Bracero yeah, program. yeah, but they got it rid had of it. Problems. Right? It had problems. And, and, we have well, to recognize abused, cur but. and we have to recognize the current system doesn't really allow for semi-skilled and, and sometimes no, unskilled workers, and it should. Yeah, it should. But, but, but I'm curious, Dr. Maria, what would you like to see added to NAFTA? We talked a little bit about immigration. Are there other kind of business-friendly things, particularly yes. from the perspective of, of Latino business? Yes, well, First of all, we need to protect the American worker. They need to be part of this conversation. And also we need a, a definitely a more energy friendly NAFTA to look at what those possibilities are. And at the end of the day, we need to do what is in the interest of Texas and in Houston. We must be at the table to make sure that we're maximizing NAFTA and that we're at the table. But I wanna go back to a point you made on immigration. And the truth is this, is that we need to make sure that we have a program that allows these individuals to continue to contribute to, to society. We need to make sure that they are here, we know who they are, and we need to have leaders who understand that comprehensive immigration is an emotional conversation which needs not to be put at the table. We need to focus on the economic impact and take the emotion out of it. Well, and, and that's, that's a good idea, but part of the problem is uh, Republicans remember that Reagan made a deal on immigration with the Democrats and we're supposed to then control illegal immigration, let the, nat let the people here stay who are law-abiding citizens and working. And what happened, it just reset the clock, the doors are still open and we're back at the same place. And if we can't change that, that it's still going to be a hot button issue. But I want to move on to something else, tariffs. <laughs> okay. uh, we have President Trump is a big believer in tariffs and, uh, and he is determined to make sure that America gets treated fairly by the Chinese. And so we're now in a tariff tiffs with the Chinese where we've added tariffs to billions and billions of Chinese goods. And uh, the end game, I, get, I, I assume that the president believes, uh, Richard, that, uh, that they'll say uncle at some point because they have the trade advantage over us. They sell us a lot more of their stuff than we sell them. Well, I hate to come back to jobs, but there was a, an article that said that if we do the full 200 million, the, the entire package on China, 200 billion on, on China, that we're going to lose 68,000 jobs here in the United States. And I think when tariffs are put in place to, um, to protect the American worker, we got to figure out what American worker we're protecting. And, and like you did, you two researched this, I researched this well uh, in preparation for this, I walked all over Houston and I never found a blacksmith and I never found a cabinet maker and I didn't find anybody who does pewter mugs by hand anymore. 
There are those those were there big makers because I bought <laughs> yeah. some stuff. From Did I say cabinet makers? Yes. Candlestick makers. I meant no, them. You sure? Like that's that's, that's more of an artistic thing. Yeah. yeah. That, that you can find them, but 200 years ago they were everywhere. Now they're not. Economics and the global economy is going to change who it is that we need that the jobs we need to fill, and it's not going to be. Uh, working on an assembly line in Detroit, in Michigan, which voted for Trump, it's not going to be because it not only won't be replaced by foreign workers, it won't. It will be replaced by robotics. Anyway. Exactly. Everyone's afraid so, of immigrants. You should worry yeah, about robots, robots because they're going to the real robot immigrants are the real threat. So, so, so I'm afraid of tariffs because I think in the long run it does two things. It costs jobs in the long run of the jobs we need. Yeah. And the other thing is, it's going to make everything more expensive. Your cell phone cost is going to go up because it's yeah, international. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, <laughs> something that Dr. Sinclair said is that my biggest concern is that if you're General Motors or a big corporation, you're talking about profit margin on tariff. If you're a small business, you're talking about you know staying alive because yes. you know there's, there's a flow down on, on those tariffs to small business, and mm -hmm. we take those prices and try to resell them to the market, and it causes mm -hmm. disruption and, and, and causes you know the prices to spike and can we stay in business? And yeah. so I think my concern is there isn't a small business representative in the USTR roundtable, right. and there's That's a, a flow down idea. to us that really yes. uh, Nancy, affects. I think you do a great job. Yeah. <laughs> we, I, I'm concerned it's gonna affect me. But my well, we have many, many, many of our members, I'll give you an example, people who yeah, do recycling, here, so. uh, yeah. that do recycling with a variety of different countries, and that is affecting their bottom line. They're saying, we had 150 employees, and now we'll have 100 because we have to make up the difference of all of these things. So there are consequences to all of these decisions. Exactly right. I mean, we, we, we have a global supply chain and, and to, to sort of lock into the idea that everything is bilateral in nature. And, and that's when the argument with China, but, but let's kind of dovetail it back to kind of this bilateral relationship with Mexico. So we've got You're to- done with China? Well, I'm not done with so China. Can we all agree that China doesn't treat us fairly in trade? I think we all agree China doesn't, but doesn't the question matter. is how do you treat, how do you deal with that, right? So without negative. Without Negatively, the way you jobs. deal with that is surgical. Right. That you, you, you attack the specific issues. You don't do a blunder bust at all, all trades. Well, that's the Trump style. Blunder bust. They did it to us. They, they taxed Harley's, which was right. our, uh, in the Paul Ryan's district, uh, whiskey in Tennessee for, uh, for our Senate Majority Leader. So they cherry picked us for pain, right? And we did a wholesale. So I'm not sure the whole t wholesale hurt them across the board. But I, I agree with uh, Richard that if you uh, surgically hit where they really have a lot of employment, uh, it could be impactful. But just like across the board, I just oh, I'll tell you, I, did, I would say this: mm -hmm. I did wonder when they had established sanctions on that Chinese phone company, and the company was going to go out of business. Now that I thought was well, now that's sending a pretty strong message, and then they we them, they, they cut a deal. D D T Too big to fail, right? <laughs> <D -T> <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, you can certainly make an argument that if you can expand manufacturing capacity in a country like Mexico. That um, that where where the cost differential wouldn't be as great as as it would be in the, uh, manufacturing in the U.S. That there may be some advantage that that things like NAFTA can work um, in, as opposed to sort of losing everything to to China. But but we want to if the idea with this trade agreement is to get North America to to grow and expand. What's going on with Canada? Uh, this was this was a trilateral agreement. Was it was well, the, 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 we, we talked about this because the 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 second largest trade partner, of course, is Canada, and it's the sec uh, second largest trade partner for Mexico as well. But not even close. But but still, it, it's just not with, a, well, at least with, well, the, with, with Texas, but it's Texas. still a significant amount there. Do we see the, uh, this becoming a, a North American free trade agreement again, or do we are we are we moving towards sort of permanency with this kind of bilateral system? Well, That's first of all, I don't think I don't think that this president can cancel. They can, he can remove us temporarily. Mm -hmm. We can have this kind of zombie NAFTA, where it's kind of just, we don't know what it is. We can we're pulling up partially, uh, but you know this is a, uh, this will continue to, to be a, a trilateral conference, right? You can't bilateral unilaterally come out of a. a, yeah, a so they call Mexico it, and the U.S. is going to have a modern yes. deal, and U.S. and Canada is mm -hmm. an archaic deal. Yeah, but you know one, one thing I want to go back to some of the things we talked about earlier in immigration. Look, if we want to uh, fix, if you don't want immigrants to come to this country, is to have a great job in Mexico, right? Right. So instead of sending jobs to countries where we're we're being attacked or where China's hacking our software, why not have a, uh, an agreement with Mexico and say instead of sending jobs to Malaysia, 
Send them to Mexico. And if you don't want to get across, let's get U.S. companies to invest in job creation in Mexico. Let's stay in the Americas, have a strong economy in our back door. Shipping Another, costs are lower, too. Right? Well, you know, it's, it makes it. There's it, great it, advantages for yeah, Houston, certain, especially with the Port of Houston and all of these right. others. It, it, it's to our advantage that Mexico's economy remain strong and that people have the opportunity to work. But can, but, but can you really do that if you're going to continue to malign the country? Well, Gary? that and, is, that is and certainly that's, that's really what the uh, issue is, an right? issue. That is absolutely an issue. Well, I didn't go out and buy a Trump piñata to beat up down there, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, again, it's all rhetoric, right? And we Turn get out the noise. Look, yeah, at, look at the deal. The Dr. deal the deal's said, a good deal for Mexico. Yeah. Focus and on for the, the economic impact. That's what people need to do on all this stuff. And the, all, turn so much of this is a distraction. Let's focus <laughs> on as as the actual no, impact that it's right. going to have. Well, when you think about, you know, the, the we talk about the Eagle Bridge shale and, you know, cross-selling gas right across the border, right? right? So if, if our concern with AMLO, Andres Manuel López Obrador, mm -hmm. if he changes those rules, uh, the concern is, you know, will we sell gas into Mexico, right? Right. And so now, you know, the Port of Corpus Christi is, is the biggest exporter of LNG now. So do we continue to now ship LNG out of the Port of Corpus Christi Just across? To a pipeline. To yeah, or, or right here right. in the Americas where we can uh, provide energy, because Mexico will run out of, of, uh, of energy. I mean, they're not producing, they're not reinvesting uh, in their production of electricity. So <clears throat> our partnership with the United States and Mexico and selling gas out of the Eagleford into Mexico is the best thing for them and for us. Well, there's, there's a provision in here that was updated, the country of origin uh, provision. So let's talk a little bit about that because I think it's important. I want to say what it means. Right? Yes, yes. Rick, why don't you, why don't you let us know what, what the country of origin provision means and let's talk about I failed to research that. <laughs> it, it, it has to do with where, it, it, what percentage of product is built into something from particular countries of origin and we've upped the amount in this current agreement of country of origin for us and Mexico both. You both have more country of origin, which means that those from outside have a harder time. Right. And also supply chain then gets a little dicey. Well, but, it, but. it's important because, you know, it's up to it's 65 to percent, right? Jobs. It's up to 65 percent. Yep. And, and the idea was is that newsflash, when things say made in the USA, it only about in the past, only about 50% of it had to have actually been made in the USA. Right. So this is this is a big improvement. But going back to China, since we didn't really in, com, entirely leave that discussion, well, the idea we're, China we're, was a big part of the reason because they're yeah, right. they're filling in. And country of origin goes back to jobs again right. because if we have more, if if a car has 10,000 parts and more of those parts have to be made in the U.S., more U.S. jobs. That's the theory anyway. Well, and the economy yeah. is doing well under doing President well Trump, despite the noise. Uh, <laughs> that's not in dispute, and, and, and you can give credit to whoever you want to know. President Obama about. says it's his deal. Uh, Trump says it is, but normally the president in office gets the credit but, and the blame. For well, but let's go back to the, those jobs and job creation and the great work that the community college are playing to fill yeah. those jobs that are manufacturing and others. Lone Star College, Houston Community College, San Jacinto College, and the uh, awareness that not everyone's going to go to a four-year school. However, we have jobs that need to be filled. We need to train these people. We need to make them aware, and we need to make sure, once again, we can take on those jobs and those roles to keep our economy vibrant and strong. Now, we have a crisis. We do have a crisis with illegal immigration, but it's not with Mexico. It's with Central America, yeah. and, but they're coming through Mexico. So one of the questions I, I want to pose to the panel, kind of the last question, is do you see a role for Mexico in helping stem some of the tide of illegal immigration to the U.S., um, but doing it in Mexico, Rick? Uh, yeah, they can uh, help pay for the wall. That'll stop. <laughs> that'll be fine. No, um, yes, uh, the notion of transit countries, mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing that happen, for instance, with the uh, uh, Syrian uh, refugees yeah, coming out. Turkey has acted as kind of the basket, and they're being given a ton of of euros to to Please. provide to well to 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 in effect house the refugees there until they can be processed in a regular fashion well, into Europe. We could do the same thing. Mexico, we could work some sort yeah, of. Yeah, but deal part of the problem they're... with the Central American refugees there are there are people who come here because of fears of violence that they've dealt nice. with, and there's a lot of people who are coming here just for economic purposes. Or, or, you know, that's, that's fleeing and, itself. And, and that's Even exactly yeah, for economic basically, reasons, that's a reason. We open inside. the doors, what's going to happen is it'll be, well, the last person that leaves El Salvador turn off the well, lights. Well, that's kind of our fault. Basically. That's the problem we made. But, but we gotta, we got to fix it. If you have screening centers in Mexico, some of right. those go back. Right. That's Absolutely. That's the point. The yeah. economic that's migrants point. Now, there is a role for the United States to play to help stabilize those countries, to try to help reduce violence. Dr. Maria, we're going to give you the last word on this and then have to wrap up. What do you think? Well, NAFTA is very important. I think it's incumbent upon us to understand the magnitude in terms of 
terms of the economic impact, the jobs that are created, and we need to continue to put pressure on those who lead to work together. This is an issue that impacts all of us, and so we need to find a way for Republicans and Democrats alike find to a way find to work a way together. to make this That's happen. That's what the show is all about. Exactly. Yes. Dr. Laura Murillo, Massa Villarreal, Rick Sindelar, thank you very much. Gary, thanks and for letting me guest host today. It was fun having you, and we'll be back next week with another guest host. I'm not sure who it will be. <laughs> <laughs> a very interesting topic. It could be Jay. Please join us. That's kind of a mystery. Another reason to tune in, right, Jay? Yes, always. Always tune in. <laughs>